The eighth and final science and engineering practice mentioned in NGSS is obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information. The communication of information is critical to the development of society and culture, as a walk through ancient Ephesus will show. Ephesus, a city over 3,000 years old in Asia Minor, is famed as a site for uh, some of the wonders of the ancient world, as well as mentioned in the Bible in the book of Ephesians. As you walk through the ancient streets, you'll notice a variety of artwork, including tiled mosaic floors, inscriptions on walls, and statuary. In addition, you may notice the famed Library of Celsus, one of the great libraries of the ancient world. Finally, you'll notice the Agora, a place where people gathered to share information, or the great amphitheater of Ephesus, where people would gather for plays and for lectures. Just as Gutenberg's development of the movable type printing press revolutionized culture and society by being able to share information broadly, so cloud computing today has the same potential. Students can share their information around the world in just seconds. And we're going to go through some CSCS lessons which show exactly how to have students do that and engage in the sharing of their ideas. Now, most students entering a chemistry class have a pretty poor understanding about what chemistry is. In fact, if they're asked, they generally say, well, it's a study of chemicals or it's a study of explosions. CSCS is an excellent tool to help students communicate things such as the significance of chemistry. Each one of them may know a little bit about chemistry, but collectively, they know quite a bit. So this is just an example activity of how they can work together to, to improve their communication about a particular topic. So in this particular activity, the students were asked to uh, look at a, a blank collaborative document then and try to answer questions in terms of how is chemistry affected the development of agriculture or electronics or foods or home products. And as you can see over here, if we were to go back to the original version here, we set up with just some basic categories and all of these blank dots. And so the students could enter into this. So if you follow this track right here, you'll see that here's the first couple entries right here. And they're very brief, just a couple coming at this point. But as you go farther down through the table, you'll notice that table gets populated more and more. And I'm just going to jump ahead quite a bit here. And you can see, okay, now we're getting actually somewhat of a substantial list. But again, notice all the people that are contributing. Now, this is over a, a year period because there's a couple different classes. But this list continues to grow and to grow. So if you're to look at the colors here, this pink here for JTR corresponds to what he did or she did over here. And so the color codes tell you exactly who contributed what. So Michael Flores contributed this text at this time. So as we go through the revision history, as we come more and more towards the present, you'll see this list growing substantially. And finally, let's go all the way towards the present right here. And you can see just the myriad of contributions have been made. And we're going to go to today's status right here and you'll see that the list of, of uh, chemicals and so forth that have, have impacted medicine or have impacted um, electronics um, or have influenced uh, foods and agriculture um, or have uh, had an impact on transportation etc. is just immense and so you, again you can see the idea of how CSCS can be used to help students collaborate to produce something that none of them could have done before. And again, this is a great way to illustrate how CSCS also can be used to, to collect information as they collect it from each other and to be able to communicate it as they communicate it to each other as well.